so good morning everyone i am dr vandana i am uh, presently working as associate professor in lady harding medical college i am md dnb pathology i've done my md from lady harding medical college i've done my mbbs from coimbatore medical college and i post that i did my dnb also i have worked as a senior research associate in aims new delhi post which i was an assistant professor in ucms and presently i am associate professor in lady harding medical college so after lots of queries which we get from the students uh, the major query that i got was to do cns cns especially cns tumors okay so uh, this video is intended especially for undergraduates who are going to give post graduate examination or first year post graduates who are just starting to learn pathology so that is why we are going to focus today on only one part of the cns because cns is a very big topic so we are going to focus today on only one small uh, part of cns that is cns tumors so to understand cns tumor first everybody should be clear with the basic cells of the cns so let us understand when you talk about cns cns has basically two types of cells okay so one are neuronal cells okay and the second one are the ganglionic cell uh, so second one are the glia cells okay so when we talk about glia glia is further of four types so first astrocytes second ependymal cells third oligodendrocytes and the fourth microglia cells and the fourth one is microglia cells okay so let's understand what is the function of each one of them so as we all know why i've written microglia separately on the top because it is mesenchymal and derivative and it is the macrophage the resident macrophage of the cns so this is the resident macrophage of the cns okay now we are left now with three types of glia cells now what are astrocytes the name is astrocytes that means they are star shaped cells so they are star shaped cells the predominant function that astrocytes have is that they regulate blood brain barrier also they are the first cells to respond whenever the cell gets injury so that is you can treat it as if it, they are the mother cells so whenever a child gets injured they are the first ones to come and help so these are astrocytes ependymal cells are the cells which line the ventricles okay so they line the ventricles so all the csf fluid uh, CL, csf filled ventricles are lined by ependymal cells okay so how do they look so they can be from low um, low cuboidal to columnar epithelium and they usually have cilia so if they have cilia this is see this is simple ciliated columnar epithelium so ependymal cells line the ventricle all around okay now we come to the third cells that is oligodendrocytes so oligodendrocyte the main function is myelination so what is the function of oligodendrocyte they predominantly have a major function of myelination okay so how do oligodendrocytes look they are like lymphocyte like cells so they are like lymphocyte like cells but the peculiarity of oligodendrocytes is that they have a perinuclear halo so they have a very peculiar peculiar perinuclear halo okay so now if somebody ask you what is the second cell to respond to injury after astrocytes so that they are microglia cells so microglia cells whenever there is some injury some infection so they will quickly rush and activate and they will try to respond to injury okay so any glia whatever glia cell we have they have a particular neurofilament in particular intermediate filament in it and the intermediate filament of glia is called glia fibril associated protein what is it called gfep glia fibril associated protein 
so any glial tissue has gfep in it okay so it has gfep in it now when we talk about neuronal tissue so neurons are the means who are you know transmitting the information from one end to other end so they are neurons okay so when we talk about neurons neuronal tissue has neurons and ganglion cells so they are made up of neurons and ganglion so they are made up of neurons and ganglions okay and the major information that they do is transmission of information now any neuronal tissue has neurofilament so what is the intermediate filament of a neuronal tissue this is neurofilament okay so what is the intermediate filament of a glia tissue gfep what is an intermediate filament of a neuronal tissue nf you understand that so now today i'm just going to focus on one type of uh, one part of cns that is cns tumors okay so cns tumors is very very easy to understand after you have understood this okay so let's see so now you have studied that we have two types of tissues glia tissues and neuronal tissues isn't it glia and neuronal okay so therefore there are two predominant primary tumors of the brain one that arises from glia what is that called gliomas so the tumor that arises from glia is called as glioma and the tumor which arises from the neuronal tissues okay are called neuronal tumors what are they called neuronal tissues now if somebody ask you how many types of gliomas can be there look at your chart that you have drawn so how many types of glia cells are there astrocytes ependymal cells and oligodendrocytes so how many types of gliomas can be there three predominant cells but then you will ask ma'am microglia is also there so microglia is actually a macrophage of the brain okay so it's a macrophage of the brain and there is no microglioma so it doesn't give rise to any tumor it reacts to many conditions but it doesn't give rise to any tumor so can i say there is no microglioma so how many types of glioma are there three types so those which arise from astrocyte is called astrocytoma so tumor arising from astrocyte is called astrocytoma tumor arising from ependymal cell is called ependymoma and the tumor arising from oligodendrocyte is called oligodendroglioma so how many types of glia tumor gliomas are there three types astrocytoma ependymoma and oligodendrogliomas these are broad categories okay now just now i told you neuronal tissue is made up of neurons and ganglions so when i'm talking that they are made up of neurons and ganglions automatically the neuronal tumors if i classify they will be made up of neurons and ganglions so let's see that so the tumor which arises here is let's say from ganglion first so tumor which arises is ganglioglioma ganglioglioms okay then from neuronal which has predominant neuronal tissue okay so neurocytomas neurocytomas okay so neurocytomas and ganglioglioma okay apart from that we also have many other types of tumor but they are uh, one of them you should know but others are beyond uh, the scope of an undergraduate at least this much you should know one more tumor that you should know here is dysembryoplastic dysembryoplastic neuroectodermal tumor neuroectodermal tumor okay so dysembryoplastic neuroectodermal tumor so for all practical purposes if i am talking about neuronal tumors it is made up of neurocytomas ganglioglioma and dysembryoplastic neuroectodermal tumor now if somebody ask you which is the most common type of glioma so which is the most common type of glioma astrocytoma so most common type of glioma is astrocytoma again somebody changes most common type of neuronal tumor ganglioglioma so ganglioglioma is the most common type of neuronal tumor okay but little bit complexity which you should remember here so what is the name of this tumor ganglioglioma so name is ganglio means neuronal glioma means glia so this has some part of the glial tissue also so now they are considered as mixed neuroglial tumors okay so ganglioglioma can be considered as a mixed neuroglial tumor so that's what you should remember now so we have started two categories of tumors of brain tumors 
that arises from glia which is called glioma and that which arises from neuron is neuronal tumor okay so uh, now we have finished about gliomas and neuronal tumors okay so now we have a category of tumors which does not arise either from neuron or from glia so these group of tumors are called as poorly differentiated tumors what are these group of tumors called poorly differentiated tumors okay so poorly differentiated tumors are also now in who 2016 there is has been marked update in who 2016 so these tumors are also known as embryonal tumors okay so what are they called as embryonal tumors because majority of them occur usually in children okay so that's the maybe the logic or maybe because they are very undifferentiated or very poorly differentiated they don't show differentiation in any of the lineages that is why it's called poorly differentiated tumors okay so poorly differentiated tumors in our brain are of two types okay so we have two poorly differentiated tumors let's see what are they first always remember medulloblastoma okay so medulloblastoma is a poorly differentiated tumor of the brain and the second which tumor you should remember is atypical teratoid rhabdoid tumor okay so atypical teratoid okay rhabdoid tumor atypical teratoid rhabdoid tumor you understand that so medulloblastoma and atypical teratoid rhabdoid tumors there are more new category of tumors which are added in this but again they are much beyond the scope of an undergraduate okay so for now you should at least remember these two okay so medulloblastoma and atypical teratoid rhabdoid tumor okay so this is a poorly differentiated em or embryonal tumors now gliomas neuronal tumors poorly differentiated tumors now what else now fourth category of the tumor arises from what does brain has apart from all these cells wbcs isn't it so lymphoid cells so cannot forget the fourth biggest category of tumors in the brain what is that cns lymphomas what are this category called cns lymphomas so we have this big category called as cns lymphoma which we should not forget in any situation okay apart from that now so these all are primary tumors so cns lymphomas can be primary or can be secondary but i am considering for now primary tumors of the brain so when i am considering primary tumors of the brain so remember so neuronal gliomas poorly differentiated and cns lymphoma comes as my first priority that i need to remember okay now these primary tumors of the brain are not very common most common tumor in the brain is metastasis approx so majority of the tumors that come to the brain are metastatic tumors so we have a bigger category of tumors called metastatic which we will come later for now let's see what we have read okay so now can you see this star shaped cell so what is this star shaped cell what do you think it is it is a astrocyte okay it is a astrocyte now can you focus on this cell what strikes your mind when you see this it is a flattened cuboidal type of epithelium so flattened cuboidal or ciliated columnar is ependymal cells so they line the csf line ventricles and they deal with csf production can you look at these cells these are lymphocyte like cells and each of them are having a perinuclear halo so what are these cells oligodendrocytes and look at these cells can you see the cells here so these cells if you focus if you see them they are actually having a elongated nucleus like this okay so it's becoming little bit elongated so what are these these are microglia cells these are microglia cells and at sometimes they may respond so much that they will become fully long like a rod cell okay so for now what are these microglia cells so microglia cells can cluster together and because they are microglia they are macrophages macrophages have a tendency to fuse to form giant cells so in between this you can even see that there are giant cells they are becoming like a giant cell okay so this cluster of microglia cells is called as microglial nodules what are they called as microglial nodules always remember microglia nodule usually occurs around the blood vessels they usually occur around the
blood vessels. So in the center, you usually have blood vessel, and this is surrounded by microglia cells. Okay, microglia cells can fuse together to form giant cells, and because they are around the blood vessel, they can sometimes eat up the RBCs and convert it into hemosiderin and become pigmented. So what will happen? They will turn into a pigmented macrophages. So what is the composition of a microglia nodule? Microglia cells, giant cells, and pigmented macrophages. Now these are seen in which condition? HIV. They are seen in HIV. Please remember, microglia nodules are seen in HIV. Okay. Now I hope you remember when I told you that all the glia cells are usually positive for GFAP. Okay. Now. Strongest positivity of GFAP is given by astrocytes because they are the ones who are going to respond maximally to injury. Sometimes when there is injury to the astrocytes or when they are irritated, these astrocytes, star-shaped cells, they can cluster the GFAP. They can cluster the GFAP together. Okay? So we will be seeing later what happens when the GFAP clusters in them. So for now, you should remember GFAP positive astrocyte is a star shaped astrocyte and you can see the star shaped projections coming out. Okay, So this is a basic configuration of CNS cells. Now look at these cells. Any guess about it? What is these? So they are very very elongated. So I told you which cells have a tendency to get elongated. What are these cells? These are rod cells. They are modified microglia cells. I hope you remember, I we just studied that microglia cells already have little elongated nuclei. So what is that nuclei? So that is activated macrophages. Sometimes they can be activated so much that they become so elongated like this. And these are called as rod cells. So rod cells are seen in syphilis. So these cells are seen in syphilis, which you all should remember. Okay. So now, so are we clear? with the basic configuration of the CNS cells and the tumors of the CNS which can arise. Okay, So if I make a basic configuration of CNS tumors now, can I say that CNS tumors is made up of two predominant types of cells, two predominant type of tumors. But before that, what you learnt? They can be of two types, primary and secondary. Most common tumor which occurs in the brain is metastasis. Most common tumor that occur in the brain is metastasis. Primary tumors are rare. Primary tumor are rare. When I talk about primary tumor now, so now we have to learn primary tumors of the brain. First, either they can be benign or they can be malignant. Okay, so... They can be either primary tumors of the brain can either be benign or they can be malignant. So, benign tumors in the brain are more common than the malignant tumors. Okay, And the most common benign tumor of the brain here is meningioma. Which is the most common primary benign tumor of the brain? Meningioma. Whereas, when I talk about malignant tumors of the brain, just now you have seen that there can be two types. It can be neuronal or it can be glial. So can I say gliomas and neuronal tumors? Gliomas and neuronal tumors. Now when you studied about the neuronal tumors, you already know three, basically only there are many, but three should be remembered. So first one is ganglioglioma. First one is ganglioglioma. The second one is neurocytomas neurocytomas okay and the third one is disembryoplastic neuroectodermal tumor disembryoplastic neuroectodermal tumor whereas when i talk about gliomas so again gliomas can be characterized into uh, three tumors what are the three tumors we can characterize astrocytomas ependymomas and oligodendrogliomas, astrocytomas, ependymomas and oligodendrogliomas. Okay, So that is the basic configuration of CNS tumor. First, you should be very very clear about it. Now third, if doesn't fit into anything, neither neurons, neither glias, what is that? 
embryonal tumors. So, what are the embryonal tumors or poorly differentiated tumors of the brain? Two, you have to remember, do not forget medulloblastoma and atypical teratoid rhabdoid tumor. Atypical teratoid rhabdoid tumor. So, that's embryonal tumor. And, of course, never forget CNS lymphoma, okay, primary or secondary. CNS lymphoma. When I put P, PCNSL means primary CNS lymphoma. So, are we clear with this configuration of the, of the CNS tumor? Yes. So, that should be very, very clear to you. You should be clear uh, till here about these points. Okay. So, now we will start going one by one about each tumor and what points we should know about each of them. Okay. So, till now you have studied most common brain tumor is metastasis. When I talk about most common primary benign tumor, it is meningioma. When I talk about most common primary malignant tumor, it is glioma, which is the most common glioma, astrocytoma, which is the most common neuronal tumor, ganglioglioma, which is the most common embryonal tumor, medulloblastoma and what is the CNS lymphoma, so this CNS lymphoma, so here only just remember two points which I am telling you, okay, so most common extranodal, most common extranodal, Okay, lymphoma, most common site of extranodal lymphoma normally is stomach. So, most common site of extranodal lymphoma is stomach. But when I say most common site of extranodal, so site, most common site of extranodal lymphoma in HIV, if somebody asks you, it is always brain. Okay, so primary CNS lymphoma usually occur in HIV positive patients because this is uh, most brain is the most common site of extranodal NH, uh, lymphoma, extranodal NHL, non-Hodgkin lymphoma in HIV patients. Are we clear with this configuration? So, with this configuration, let's start one by y, one by one about each tumor. So, which was the most common, um, most common brain tumor? Which was the most common brain tumor? Metastasis, isn't it?